Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a very relaxed video. I would like to share with you my review on another small set of watercolors, this time from Jackson's Art. I have to say that I filmed this video before, but I received a very strong feedback that the music on the background was a little bit too loud and was distracting. I'm still trying to figure out uh, the engineering behind audio so that I can give you the best experience possible, so you may forgive me for this. Before I start this video, I would like to mention that uh, I haven't given this watercolor for free or I haven't been sponsored by Jackson's. If you follow my channel, you probably have seen a review I've done a few months ago of a larger set of these watercolors. I found myself reaching out to them over and over, so I decided to get a few more puns. Hopefully, in time, I'll be able to purchase the entire set. This color came packaged in uh, tin foil with a label reporting all the info around the paint and the producer. The half pan are extruded, but they seem to stick quite well to the pan itself, so they won't fall apart. The colors I got are cadmium yellow deep, which is made out of PUY35, bright red, which is PR254 and PO43, violet deep U which is PB16 and a combination with PV23. And then finally Prussian Blue, PB27. I really love the shininess of the colors and the way they reactivate extremely quickly, as I could notice because, of course, I didn't take care of wetting them in advance. They seem really strong in pigment composition, and the concentration of the pigment powder is really strong as well. As the colors are really bright, both on the paper and on the pan. Probably the less pigmented one is gonna be the violet, but it's just to be very picky. I particularly like the flow of the Jackson's brand watercolors, as I mentioned before in my previous video. They behave very similarly to Senelier's watercolor. If you have tried Senelier's before, in my opinion, these are a very good, uh, less expensive alternative. Of course, if you like that style. The extraordinarily flowing properties of these watercolors are made due to a small amount of honey mixing the composition of the paint, which allows the water to make the pigment flow so much easier than other brands. Let's take, for example, Winsor & Newton. I find that the only drawback of uh, having honey in the composition is that it slows the dry time quite a bit, which is a problem if you're traveling with your palette and may require some time to dry in the pan. For today's video, I'm going to try and uh, create some skin tones out of these uh, four quite peculiar sets of colors. If you know me, portraits are more or less an obsession of mine, although they are not really the main part of my art endeavors. And I do enjoy try and uh, create skin tones out of um, unexpected color combinations. I'm painting on a piece of Fabriano 300 GSM cotton paper, uh, which is uh, cold press, as I do enjoy very much the texture of the paper itself. I buy these uh, sheets in a large format, and I cut them to size 
which is a good way to save some money on buying sketch pads and stuff like that, which tend to be quite expensive. As you see, I start from a very light sketch on the paper, just made with a regular 2HB graphite pencil, and then layering first the yellow, followed by the red, the purple, and then finally the blue. I tend not to mix too much my watercolors on the palette, but uh, I like to use them in their pure nature. This will make me, first of all, understand the colors much better, so that uh, at a later stage, with other paintings, I can understand how they behave by themselves and then in combination with other colors. And secondly, it will give me the possibility to address better shadows, lights, where the curves are on the face and all the features that I needed to achieve in order to get the likeness on the painting. I don't know if this is a good technique overall as it resulted before in many blue-faced paintings or green skin tones that are not quite common, let's say, in people, but uh, at the same time, it's a good exercise for me. And it's a good exercise anyway, if you are really working with a very small palette.
I do enjoy at a later stage of my painting to linger a little bit on the details of the facial features like the eyes, the, the faucets underneath the eyes and as well the nose, the mouth and of course the ears which will give the painting much more likeness. Between a layer and the other I have to admit that I use an air dryer. As I mentioned, these colors take ages to dry and I'm not patient at all. I find that drying the paint with an air dryer may lead some, to some dullness at the end result. I still haven't figured out yet if it's due to the air dryer and the warm hair flow that dries the paint or to the combination of paper and paint that I'm using. But I don't mind that at all and is barely noticeable. I will leave you now to the rest of the painting and uh, hopefully this uh, video uh, audio recording is much better than the previous. And if you try this watercolor and uh, you would recommend me other colors to get or techniques to adopt, I'll be really happy. Please leave a comment below. As well, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This will massively help my teeny tiny channel to grow a little bit and give my art some exposure. Thank you so much and I'll see you very soon. Sloan. <laughs>
Thank you.